Hi, this is Donna. Welcome to DD Paper Crafts. In today's video, we're going to be making this, this book style gift box, which has a hidden flip lid, like so. The internal size of the box is eight and three quarters by six and three quarters. This is the only project I've made of this box, so there is one point in the video where I edit in something that I would do differently. So let me show you how I put the box together. For the front and back pages of the box, you'll need two pieces which are seven by nine. And on one side, I've used my corner punch to round off the corners, but that's just personal preference. For one of the side panels, you'll need a piece which is eight and three quarters by three. Along the three inch side, score at half and two and a half. For the base of the box, I'm starting with a piece which is nine and a half inches long, but this is much longer than I need and it's three inches wide. Along the three inch side, score at half and two and a half. And along the long side, score at half. And within the top half inch glue tab, score at seven and a quarter down to the half inch glue tab. Flip the piece over and repeat at the other side. We're now going to create our curve for the spine of the box. This is optional. You might want to go with a straight edge, so this piece is optional. I've taken a four inch circle die and I did play around with various circles until I got the sort of curve that I wanted. I'm lining the outside edge of the circle die between the ends of the score lines within the middle section and then I've drawn around the outer edge of the die. So you can see my curve runs between the two half inch tabs. Now what I'm going to do is using the curve, we're going to calculate the piece of cardstock we need for our spine. I've taken a scrap of card and added a slight curve into it, and I've laid it around the pencil line of the curve and made a line at the end. And my measurement here is two and one eighths of an inch. For the spine, I've therefore cut a piece which is three and one eighths of an inch by seven and a half inches. Along the three and one eighths of an inch side, score at half, rotate 180 degrees and score at half. And along the long side, score at half an inch. So this is for the bottom portion of the spine. I'm going to start with the side panel, fold and burnish along the score lines, and take a wedge from the ends of the long glue tabs. Next, you want to take your base piece. So this is the piece with the curve. Fold and burnish the glue tabs. With the half inch glue tab in front of you, Cut away the left and right hand corners where the score lines intersect. And then cut a wedge from the end glue tab and from the ends of the glue tabs nearest. Cut up the score line within the half inch tab on both sides and then cut around your curve. Remove any pencil marks you might have and then cut a wedge from the ends of the long glue tabs. Next we're going to take our spine piece, fold and burnish along the score lines, cut away the intersecting corners. And cut a wedge from the end of the glue tab next to the smaller glue tab and then cut a series of teeth into the small glue tab. And then add a curve into the central section 
this is just going to help us when we glue our pieces together take your three pieces now what you might want to do is use the curve on this piece as a template for when you cut the lid so you might want to skip forward to the lid section now alternatively reuse your curve to create a curve on the lid separately I will remark my lid separately when we get to it so this is the base section this is our spine and this is our side panel which represents the pages we're going to join all three pieces together I'm going to add glue to the glue tab on the base and add that to our page panel make sure that all lines up and that the piece does sit squarely you want that to form a nice right angle when the pieces are pulled around burnish the tabs we're then going to add glue to the serrated teeth on the spine element and then we're going to use the teeth to add the spine to the curved end of the base once you're happy with that just push the teeth down fold up your pieces so we've got our base our spine and our page panel fold the tabs in add your adhesive to the three sets of tabs and sit one of your side panels on the top I'm going to start with the, the bottom of the spine and line up the bottom of the page with the bottom of the base make sure I get a nice right angle and then I'm going to fold down the page panel and the page is going to sit a quarter of an inch wider than the frame so I'm going to take my ruler and just move along sitting my ruler at a quarter of an inch on the edge of the page I'm going to move along so that this side panel sits in the right place and then when I'm happy go in with my score tool and burnish down the tabs flip the piece over and add glue to the top tabs and then sit your second page and obviously make sure that you've got your two rounded corner edges if you've used them on the same side I'm going to show you now what I did with the lid so this is how the box looks when it's finished and I've added in this faux bookmark which acts as a tab to lift the lid up and down now if you want to add this in I've cut a slot which is the width of my bookmark and then folded back two tabs to secure it into the base of the lid I would cut the slot for the lid whilst it's still flat which is what we're going to do now I added this at the end and it was slightly trickier so when the lid is flat before you add the two lid pieces together add your DSP to the top of the lid panel and then make your slot for your bookmark or whatever you're going to use to lift your lid up if that's something you are going to use so I'll show you how to make the lid now but that's just something to bear in mind this is the part that you would flip forward to if you're, you want to use your base curve as a template for the lid you'll need a piece which is three inches wide and the length of it will depend on your curve I've got a piece which is three and a half by nine and a half along the three inch side score at half and two and a half and along the long side score at half and then score at seven and a quarter within the two half inch glue tabs for the top part of the spine you'll need in another piece which is three and one eighth by two and along the three and one eighth inch piece score at half rotate and score at half fold and burnish the glue tabs on the long lid piece so we're going to create the lid similar to we did as the base but rather than draw around the curve I'm going to use my score tool to make the curve 
cut away the intersecting left and right hand corners and then cut a wedge into the ends of the glue tabs. Cut up the seven and a quarter inch score lines as we did with the base piece and then gently burnish around the curve and then I'm going to cut an approximate half inch tab from the curve cut along the score line to remove those outer sections up to our cart lines and then cut a series of teeth into the curve so we still have our curved shape Take the remaining spine piece and fold and burnish the tabs. Flip the piece over and from the right hand side I'm going to measure up one and three quarters of an inch and just make a pencil mark along. One glue along the teeth on the lid piece. Add a slight curve into the top spine. And then add glue within the half inch tabs from the pencil line towards the bottom and then we're going to sit our curved lid up against the pencil line on the spine. Wrap the two side tabs around and then go in and press the teeth in around the curve. We're now going to add glue to the back hinge. I'm going to adhere the hinge to the inside of the back of the box. And what will happen is once we've decorated the spine, we'll add a disguise strip onto the top of the spine and then this piece will sit down in beside it. So this is fundamentally our box and it comes together really once it's been decorated. So I'm going to get on with that now. Here's the finished box which I've added DSP onto all of the surfaces. The paper here on the front is from the Meadow Garden paper pad from Crafters Companion. And then this pages effect paper was from a Stamperia collection. So you can see the faux bookmark tab which I've added into the top of the box to use to open and close the lid and I've added the two gold strips so that the lid is semi-concealed. This is a really substantial size box and overall I'm really happy with how it's come out and it wouldn't be too difficult to resize to suit your needs. So there we have today's project. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.